morning, everyone. Hope the night wasn't too hard. Too hard, too short, whatever. And may I introduce you to Baptiste Daroussin, a core team member of FreeBSD, author of Poudrière and PKG, uh, speaking about cross building the FreeBSD port tree. Right, thank you for attending. So, uh, we tried recently to see how much complicated it would be to get uh, the port three cross buildable. A lot of people want to be able to cross build things. We're talking about that for, I think, since the beginning of the port three, and we're starting to get something that is able to, to cross build. So, the goal for cross building is to be able to, um, well, Build first packages for new architectures or for not fully supported architectures, yes, too. And if we can st just start to build things, patch things to say, okay, FreeBSD knows about ARM v6, FreeBSD knows about MIP64, whatever, we can have a start of packages and we need to build them. Um, the embedded platforms is getting more and more interests and most of them are not yet very, very powerful, so you might want to be able to build your own packages on a fast machine, on um, an AMD64 box with a lot of cores, RAM, or whatever, instead of building, I don't know, LibreOffice on your Raspberry Pi. It's also very useful because a lot of packages are not really, a lot of Different package or needs a bootstrap to be able to uh, to, to be able to to compile the first time, so you get a chicken egg problem where you cannot bootstrap if a bootstrap doesn't exist yet, like Java, Haskell, whatever. So you need to be able to cross build from somewhere to be able to create the first bootstrap, and you don't want to do it in a complicated in a complicated way. And the last thing is. If you're able to cross-build, then you're also able to cross-build for other operating systems. And you might want that if you want to be able to cross-build, for example, things for the Linux emulation. Instead of relying on packages provided by another project like CentOS, SUSE, whatever, you can decide to build your own packages for that other operating system. So you would still use your infrastructure to build your own packages, but just target something else. So it's really important to be able to cross-build. And it allows as well to make sure that the framework is clean enough to um, pass the right variables to the different build system, make sure that things are respecting C flags, are respecting the compiler you're passing and not trying to hot cut some in a way or another the pass to its own compiler. So cross-building is something we really want as um, make sure uh, as the quality insurance. If we're able to cross build then our package system is quite sane. But it's not something you want for uh, production without testing. You can cross build things but you need to make sure that you can run them as well. If you just cross build it doesn't mean that you do support them. So we went very different way to be able to cross build. The first way was uh, we wanted to, instead of cross building, we decided that maybe we could emulate things. So we used the QMU uh, user learn emulation thing to say, okay, here in this jail, I'll put only ARM, ARM v6 binaries and we will run them through the QMU emulator, not as a full emulation, but as, as a user emulation, meaning each time I find a binary which is ARM v6, then I will run it through the emulation. If it's an AMD64, we will use it. So that was not cross-building, but the good point of this, this one is we are building packaging in the regular way. So we are making sure that if you are trying to build something on your Raspberry Pi, then we will test something which it goes which goes the same way that what will you will do. Sean Bruno has done a lot of work in that area, and he talked about it yesterday. The result is with that way we are able to build almost all the ports tree on ARM v6, 
and the only one that fails are the two major ones, but most of them are due to uh, not having bootstrap like OpenGDK or because it's something that is not supposed to work on ARM v6. So we got pretty good results with that. In two years, there has been a lot of, a lot of improvements here. The problem with this approach is QMU um, user emulation is um, a bit fragile. The, basically, you have a mapping between uh, syscalls from ARM for ARM v6 to the version for AMD64 and the, way, the other way around. So you have to implement everything in, into a huge uh, switch case saying, OK, the binary is trying to do that. How I can translate that to AMD64 and translate back? And the other thing is it's slow. So it's three weeks to be able to build all the, all the, um, all the package while on the same machine you have uh, something like 15, day, 15 hours to be able to build them natively. Not something new. So we get another way, which was an hybrid way. We decided to uh, use the user emulation for everything that we will build, and to use a cross tool chain to be able to use that, to to natively run binaries uh, that are often called like CC, strip, LD, S, etc. So. I won't go further on this because this is not comp compilation. This is just the background of where, we, where we're from. And we, so we modified, uh, we added a new kernel module which is able to um, say that, oh, this binary is uh, actually an ARM binary, so I prepend the emulation on it and run it. So it was OK, but that doesn't really, that improved a lot the speed, but that's still slow. Um, it's a week now to get, so we get from three weeks to one week to, to be able to build the packages. So we still want something faster. So the true way is to go through the real cross compilation. It's faster, it's simpler because basically if your framework is good enough, it's just passing a new compiler and a couple of environment variables so that it knows where the ARM v6 libraries are and everything is run with native speed. So it's cleaner and it's easier to use for a regular user as you don't have to know about uh, the bin missing which or you, do, you don't have to to know about QMU and you don't have to prepare special env environment so the overhead of this approach is on the port tree if you want to cross build the packages you have to cro you have to cross build to build them most of them twice you have to build them, uh, all the build dependency, the lib dependency, uh, in a native version and in um, target version. Why? Because if you think about libxslt, for example, it has two things. It has a library, so you want the target version so that you can link to it properly. But if something is running xslt proc, then you need the native version. So we had to figure out a way to install the same package twice with two different binary format and that it does not conflict. So first, we had to have a look at how building system works to make sure that we can plug easily in it to make them do something nice with cross building. So first, you have auto tools. Well, auto tools is their usual configure, make, make, install. So surprisingly, it really works out of box. Most of the time you just take it, pass it through the right variables, and you get a good cross-built binaries, except that no one knows to how to use them correctly. And you often, end up with, you often end up with people not understanding how cross-building should be done in auto tools, building uh, temporary binaries in the target format instead of building them in the native format and then you try to run them to, I don't know, convert this file to something else or build this into this other object and it just fails. So the reality is still most of the usage you can find are working out of box. CMake is basically one of the good players. I haven't had major problems with it except 
people trying to be smarter than what CMEC propose and trying to extend this their own way instead of getting through the CMEC doc documentation. Somehow, the BSD make files are mostly properly done for cross compilation. Um, it's more a matter of how people do use them, I mean, using outside of uh, user source or user ports. I mean, someone tr figured out that it's quite nice and easy to use to build my own thing, so I will use them. And we got the same problem like with CMEC or auto tools that people don't understand that cross it should be cross buildable or not. And sometimes we have targets that generate a binary and use that binary directly instead of the, the native one. So now the bad players. So please never ever use this one. This is probably the worst build system I've seen. It has no, um, it, it doesn't define a, a, um, a framework, a real framework to, to do things. So it doesn't know about the basics that anyone is expecting to. It depends on how the, the people using it are implementing it. So basically you can have scones that knows about DSDR or not. You can have scones that knows about, I can pass a different compiler than the one you do expect or not. Respecting C flags or not, whatever. So scones is, please don't do that. Well, building is simple. You know, it's just, I take this C file, I take this compiler, and I generate an object out of it. Yes, it's simple. Real world building is not that simple. If things like auto tool, C make, or a BSD make file, or whatever, are that complicated, it's on purpose. It's because you, there is a lot of use cases you don't know about. So writing by hand your own make file, except if you have really good experience with uh, building things on different operating system, different architecture, different versions different uh, trying to cross build or not. If you don't have this experience, please don't try to be more clever than people that are spending a lot of time on this. Use something that already exists and is able to do the good stuff for you, except schools. And, well, it's kind of pre-homemade uh, build system, but it's not even going through make or whatever. Please stop with those shell scripts that tries to be clever as well. There is a number of things where you have, oh, please build me, and it does some magic. You cannot uh, control what is going on inside. So avoid those, and you're in the in a same environment. So the main complication we had now um, when we try to cross-build is, so Perl. Perl is nice. It's it's cross build friendly if you it's cross build friendly if you have a look at the documentation but if you try to do it in real life it's a bit different so it requires when you do oh i will cross build this for this target it requires you to get actually the target box somewhere it asks you for a ssh user uh, a password or uh, a key and it goes, it connects through this box, executes things over there, bring them back into your system, and build. This is really not what you want when you want to cross-build things. The other problem is Python. So Python is cross-build friendly. It's using auto tools. It's supposed to do good things, whatever. There is one thing they forgot about. Well, they do build the Python binary, and then they use it. Well, if you cross-build, you get an ARM Python binary on an AMD64 box. Then you try to run it, and you just say, what is this? Can I do something with that? There are patches for very, very long. There are patches for very, very long in the, um, the Python bug tracker. And each release, or almost each release, they say, OK, we fixed that. And then you discover uh, you forgot part of the patch. And I think, I think now, oh, that's something else. I think now in Python 3.4 it's fixed, but I haven't checked yet. 
And because in FreeBSD, we do like a lot to complicate our life because others are not complicating enough for us, so we do that ourselves. And I don't know how we ended up with the Python port and the way we do build that, but it was everything but how you should build Python. Thank the Python team, now it's fixed. And we, have, we are re using the regular build from Python so I can apply the regular patches available to make Python cross build and I can cross build Python properly. Open GDK. Well, this one is surprisingly cross build friendly for real. It really builds properly on a cross build and it works. Well, it generates a binary. I haven't tried to run it, but I have a Java binary in the end. So that means with the cross build framework, I am able to generate the bootstrap because they decided somehow in the middle of the development of GDK 6 that being able to build Java without Java is something crazy. So now they enforce Java to build Java. So you need to build the first bootstrap and now we can do that because we can cross, cross build for ARMv6, for Spark64, whatever. Except that to get into, to get into OpenGDK, you need both of them and without both of them, you have pretty much nothing in the post tree. And so we need to figure out a way for both of them to fix. Now the tool chains. Well, I said tool chains because we have different tool chain in the FreeBSD project. We have LLVM Clang and we have the very old GCC. So first Clang. Clang is wonderful for us. It's one of the, on, it's a, com a, a compiler which is cross build friendly, you know. It's multi-target by default. So you build it and then you just have to specify your target and it does the right thing to generate you uh, the, um, the, the right binaries and call the right bin util. So it's nice, you don't have to, you don't need to have 10 different copies of Clang, one for targeting ARM, one for targeting MIPS, whatever. So Clang is nice. The problem is, well, Clang is working properly on Intel boxes, and since FreeBSD 10, we have it working properly on ARM except Big Indian. And other targets are not working with Clang. So one of the point of the cross building is, for example, to be able to target MIPS, which is usually a very small CPU, low power, whatever. So, well, Clang is nice, allows us to do a lot of things, except that our targets are not supported right now by Clang. Well, MIPS should be supported quite soon. I heard uh, Power PC is quite close to get supported as well, and someone did the work for Spark 64, so you should have a Spark 64 back in soon. GCC, well, first we have GCC 4.2. Uh, if you try to do anything modern with GCC 4.2, you won't have much, in particular in C++. So uh, if we want to do cross building, we cannot rely on GCC 4.2, so we need to go to a newer version of GCC and having cross build friendly. The second thing is, as I said, in FreeBSD, we like to complicate our lives. So I don't know in that case if GNU people were complicating our life or if we did, or a mix of both, each one being pissed off by the thing is, um, we have a couple of patches that we need to uh, have GCC knows about some of the targets we have. For example, we have patches to get ARM uh, binary, to, to get GCC creating uh, FreeBSD friendly ARM binaries. And those patches were never upstream. So if you want to use a modern GCC with, uh, to generate ARM target, then you don't have, you won't be able to, to, um, to build ARM packages. So Recently, uh, Andrew did the work of patching GCC 4.8, so we need to do the same work to push that into the 5 branch because I think it's the last open branch. But we are slowly getting there. The other thing is, it's not just a matter of format. We have a couple of extensions to be able to build the kernel with, uh, with GCC, and those extensions we have also to either to push them or to maintain something on top of the new GCC. 
So to build packages, I just need to make sure that GCC knows the formats we know and we want. But if I really want to be able to cross-build the whole system with an external toolchain, then I need also to upstream more patches we've added recently to uh, GCC. And that will be a, a bit of work because GCC is a fast-moving target. And since Clang is out, it's getting faster. And if you do something for GCC for edge, you're, it's not that easy to port it to GCC 5. You might have to change a lot of things or not, you don't know. But still, it's a lot of work. And it's not really a cross-build friendly compiler. Well, it knows how to cross-build, for sure, hopefully. Otherwise, there's a lot of things that won't work today. The thing is, you will need to have a copy of GCC per uh, target you want to aim at. You cannot have one single installation of GCC and say, oh, I will build this uh, for ARM, I will build this for MIPS. Well, you can, but it's not working exactly as you expect. And of course, we have two, two compilers and the new one is trying to get as close as possible to GCC, except sometimes, and in particular in things that are interesting us in the case of uh, cross-building. So you get to, through all the documentation you can find on the internet on how to do proper cross-build and things like this without having to prepare yourself for special target for that. And then you discover that oh, this almost works, and I don't know why the wrong bin utils are being used, whatever, and you discover that you need changes. So that means in the framework, I need to first discover if you're trying to build with GCC or if you're trying to build with Clang and pass the variables a bit differently depending on which, is, which of the compiler you're using. Bin utils. So... In the base system, we have the latest uh, GPLv2 bin utils plus a couple of patches on top of it. And I decided that I won't use this version for cross compilation. I will use the most recent version of bin utils because uh, it supports more targets, uh, because uh, it's simpler to get through the port uh, cross build version of bin utils. The thing is, as for GCC, we didn't upstream our patches, in particular the ARM support, because GCC, uh, the, the old version we have in base, never, it was out before ARM was popular, so it didn't have proper support for ARM, so we had to write it ourselves. But of course, we didn't upstream that, so that was a problem. And I don't remember who did the work of uh, uh, adapting our patches to the newer bin utils, but now it's fixed and next of next upstream version of, uh, of bin utils will have our patches to be able to cross build. And bin utils is cross build friendly. You can have a multi target version of bin utils saying that, okay, I'll build this bin utils and depending on the flag I pass, it will generate ARM binary and or it will generate MIPS binary or native binary, except that. Gas is not um, able to be multi-target. So basically that makes things a bit more complicated. Without GAT, you don't get far. You don't get very far. So we ended up having to, uh, to create one bin utils per architecture we want to target to, just because of gas. Well, actually, the other thing is it makes things simpler because uh, if you have a multi-target um, bin util, then uh, you have to manually specify the, the LD flags you need for the given target. And if you have um, bin utils that only target one platform, then it automatically knows what um, the, the flags you want to specify for this target. So speaking of complicating our life, I need a sysroot to be able to uh, build uh, packages. I need to say to uh, my compiler, to my linker, here is my headers for ARM, here, is, uh, here are my, binary, my libraries for ARM, you need to link against them, and etc. So we need to be able to build a sysroot out of the regular FreeBSD sources. So we used to have, well, we still have something called MacXDev 
this was basically trying to build um, a cross tool chain based on the base uh, on the on, on the tool chain we have in the base system and then cross build all the libraries and put that into in nice fashion into a repository uh, a directory where you can find everything ready to be able to do cross build well it worked so it created a sysroot across competition tool it worked pretty well but it's inconsistent over the version. In the post three, we do support FreeBSD 8, FreeBSD 9, FreeBSD 10, FreeBSD head. So we need to be able to provide the same feature whatever version of FreeBSD we do, we use. So I need to be able to have a sysroot for FreeBSD 8 as well as head. And make his dev basically is only properly working right now in what will be 10.1. It's only properly working if you are targeting something that has Clang. Because it used to work properly on, uh, on 9, but uh, when Clang went in, uh, there was some magic that was involved to decide, oh, I, use, um, I need to uh, build this tool or not into the tool chain. I need to build this tool or not into the tool chain. And because everyone was happy to get rid of GCC probably, then if you're targeting at, uh, something which is still using GCC, well, it just broke up because some part of missing. So, um, it's, we need, we needed to fix that. So the solution was, okay, we can use XDEV to build the sys route, but the tool chain, whatever, we will use Clang from, from the post three. So I focused on Clang, and I'm recently switching to JCC to be able to get the other arch architecture. I focused on Clang. I decided that the less building, the less build the user has to do, the better they are. They are so because in uh, FreeBSD 10, Clang is um, is good enough to be able to cross build thing. I will use base Clang if possible. If you're building on nine, then we will use a port version of Clang, and so that's why we will fall back if your version is too old on the port version. So right now, 3.3 .3 is enough. I probably switch to, by default, having a 3.4 version. And in that case, if you're on 10.0, it will automatically use a version from the port tree. And we will use binutils from ports all the time because it's simpler for us to say, OK, this is the version we want instead of has buys the right things, the right binutils to be able to do to do our stuff. But building using binutils from from the port three has p kind of quirks for us. Basically, um, gas is uh, more pedantic uh, in some areas, and most of our uh, uh, assembly files were missing some end sections and get newer gas who are just dying on this. So we had to fix them. So right now we have fixed the ARM version. I need to check all the other targets to fix, well, to get someone fixing the other targets. And um, we need to um, create some, some ports that are able to build the sys route. Because the user just wants to get into a directory, say, I want to build this for FreeBSD 10 ARM. The user don't want to have to prepare a lot of things by, by himself before. So we need to get a port that is able to fetch the FreeBSD sources, whatever version we do support, and generate a sysroot out of that. OK, so creating the sysroot now we have seen that MakeXDev is not really nice for us. So we don't have a target for Maxis for to create a sysroot. We need one. Really, we, it's something that user will often want. I, actually, um, everyone building appliances on FreeBSD, I guess, is probably creating its own sysroot often. So we need one. But yeah, because otherwise, it's something really easy to do. Uh, you know, it's just this small command line to be able to, with a couple of magic in the middle where you say, I don't want this, but I want this. No, really, we need the target. Who knows that you only 
for example, in our sources, uh, NQRCs need to uh, build first uh, a build tool to generate headers or yeah, it's, it's headers. And who knows this? No one. So we need a simple target. Create a syswood for me, please. Take this compiler, take this, um, this linker, and put everything there. We need that. That's what MakeXDev was intended for uh, at the beginning. If we look at the ports infrastructure, it was surprisingly um, not intrusive to add support for um, cross-compilation. And basically, you need to keep a track of what is your host compiler, because the native compiler, because you will need to pass it to things that have build tools they want to have native. We need to switch the default compiler to the cross compiler. And we need to point uh, the strip command, because we use it a lot uh, in the port 3, to um, the strip command from the cross binutils version. And well, I needed to, to modify a bit package because package is um, introspecting um, binary, uh, not introspecting, is, is um, in asking the host what is your target when it tries to build, what is your native uh, architecture when it tries to build a package so it can write, uh, okay, this package is for FreeBSD 10, AMD 64, whatever. So you can overwrite it in the post three saying this is no arch package, this is you can change it, but by default, it uses the version on the host. And to do that, I don't rely on the kernel because you can run a recent kernel with an ancient user land, so I rely on the user land and I read the bin shell uh, binary because I guess everyone has bin shell. But if you do crawl build, you have a sys root, so you don't have any bin shell. So I had to modify package so that it can read, um, it can read uh, the ABI it supports from one of the files inside that sys root. And I decided to use one of the files you will always have, which is uh, CRT1.0. And we have a couple of variables like making package conf. Well, we don't use package config on FreeBSD because package conf config is quite of crap right now, where you, ha it's, you need glib to, to have package config, and package config need glib, and, you know, and glib need to package config. So we use something called package conf, but it's basically exactly the same and support the same syntax and the same features as package config. And so you need to tell package config that I have a sys root somewhere, so instead of querying the .pc file from the host, please query them from the sys root. We have to change a bit, a couple of behaviors. So we have two kind of dependency macros in, in the post framework, the lib dependency and the build dependency. And I have to say, okay, if something is in the build dependency or in the lib dependency, build, please build it twice, the native and the cross build. And we need, I needed to, to be able to install packages into a different uh, destination. So what we do is we natively install uh, the dependency on the host for the native dependency. And I added a dash dash relocate uh, option to package uh, register so I can install the target into the sys root. So I have two different clean environments where to find, where, where to put my binaries. And, um, and I needed to, uh, to get a couple of magic saying, okay, if I do cross compilation, then I have a dependency on the sys root which is this port, I have a dependency on this bin utils, I have a dependency on this compiler. And then you have tweaks from ports by ports because we have a lot of people trying to be more clever than what is already offered. So you have to fix what they did. So how we do we did fix Perl? We have two choices. There is for a very long time a Perl cross, uh, cross project uh, which never get, never find its way into uh, the ma into the main Perl, which basically uh, provide auto tools to build uh, Perl, and well, it works very well if you want to do cross building. The other thing is uh, you do provide, you you can do it through providing preceded config.h files, and so you have first to run the the Perl configure on the different targets you're aiming at. 
you get back the headers and then you remove from it everything that you know that is version dependent, architecture dependent, and you basically do the configure job by yourself instead of letting Perl doing it. That's what is done, for example, in OpenWRT and other embedded Linux uh, platform that do cross-building. So Python, what we need to do is um, bring the patch that are needed to uh, 2.7. So Python, uh, well, we cannot patch Python so that it will build a native version of Python and a target version of Python. But we can patch it to say, OK, I already have Python on my system. So, and it's a good version. So if you try, if you build, build like you want to build, meaning only target, but when you tr would try to run Python, use the version from my native package I have already installed. So that is uh, what we need to, br to bring back. And I think all the stuff has been committed into 3.4, so I need to check. Scones, well, there is no solution for scones. Uh, I mean, uh, I think Samba is now using that, and Samba is probably the only one that managed to get something working with scones, and I can cross-build Samba. I don't know how they did that. But all other projects, I never managed to get something really uh, reliable based on this. Okay, so from the port user, from the end user point of view, when you now you want to cross build, all you have to do is you go into a port, you specify one magic macro, and you say, okay, I will build for this version of FreeBSD for ARM v6, and this is the IBI we do support, and create a package for me. You can do that as a user, it works. And what it will do is it will check your compiler, okay, you have Clang in base, I will use it. It will say, okay, I need this um, double, dash, uh, double slash bin utils arm, whatever, to, so it will install it. And it will go through a port which I haven't imported yet, but which is uh, FreeBSD Sysroot uh, ARM v6, quite long name, and it will, it will build a Sysroot, install it, so you don't have to know yourself how to build FreeBSD Sysroot. You just let the portrait do the magic. And, well, it's supposed to be with this, with, oh yeah, without a provided sysroot. With a, with a provided sysroot, a lot of companies are using FreeBSD in their appliances. So they are already building their own sysroot, and they don't want the overhead of building again a sysroot on top of it. So they want to be able to say, okay, I still want all of this to work out of box, but I will tell the system that my sysroot is there. So you can specify it with another macro that, your sysroot is there. And the portrait will do all the magic of going through the dependency, install the native one, install the target one, and create the package. And everything, if you have already all the dependency installed, everything is done as a regular user. You don't need any root credentials. The, the limitation we have is, I'm a bit late, I think. Okay, so the limitation we have now is, um, the base system that still use, the, the version of the base system that still use um, GCC are bringing uh, lib standard C++ from GCC 4.2. And it gives us a nightmare because you'll get a mix with newer uh, standards of lib C++ and older one and it gets complicated. So I need to figure out a way to, to fix that. The other thing is, um, we need to use GCC anyway for everything that is not supported in, in Clang. So OpenMP, for example, is not supported in Clang. Uh, everything that is not respecting C++ standard is relying on GCC. And we have a couple of, we still have a lot of people using those weird nested functions in C that is a GNU extension which is not supported in Clang as well. So we need to to find a way to, to have this clean. By the way, we, for, for OpenMP, we have a solution, well, using GCC, but not linking to um, GNU standard C++, which is we tweak a bit uh, G++ so that it uses lib C++. It's quite easy to do. And, well, right now, with how, well, until, until yesterday, uh, I wasn't able to do anything with GCC only platform. Yesterday, I managed to get uh, first packages building for ARM 
uh, ARM Big Indian, so using GCC 4.8. So we are getting close. Thank you. Without the S. Do you have any questions? Well, it's not exactly a question, but uh, since I'm OpenBSD, I don't have to be diplomatic about things. Uh, upstreaming patches to GCC, it's definitely GCC's fault. It's almost impossible to do a real open source work with the GCC people because you do a patch, then you submit it upstream, and they tell you that it's not the latest version, so they don't accept it. Yeah. And it takes at least one month to get that reply, usually. And then you try it with the newest version of the actually non-working branch on your operating system. And you submit a bug report. You wait for another month for somebody to fix it. Then you realize that your patch has changed, that you need to rewrite it. You submit it again. Then you wait for another month. You realize that uh, you missed something in the incredible coding guidelines that they have. So they send it back to you telling you to fix it because you missed a space somewhere. You wait for another month. You realize that it doesn't work anymore with the version. So it's not fun, not yeah. fun at all. So uh, maybe you can do something about it since you have lots of money in the Free BSD Foundation, but if you really want to get uh, upstream patches, you have to pay somebody to do that because it's not fun. Well, anyway, the, the main point for us is to move everything, well, all other targets to Clang. So in the end. <laughs> <coughs> So, yes? Jordan. So, obviously, with this work you're doing, you're seeing a lot more interdependencies between package building and the source tree. Yep. What is your long term roadmap for essentially kind of merging the notion of cross building everything? Well, um, so one of the nice things I saw with that is I'm now having um, a prepared external toolchain so I can build the base system with an external toolchain. So uh, my roadmap is first get things working with GCC because that's where we basically need an external toolchain. And um, once I have this done, then go back into the source tree, create the Maxis route, uh, finish what I need to finish to um, to use an external compiler in, in, in the base system. But basically, with uh, the simple, with this simple thing, <laughs> you're able to use an external tool chain totally. Well, so the sys root is not, does not need the, the base compiler at all. Well, basically, this is extracted from Maxx dev. So if you look at uh, makefile.inc1 in the, in the base system, you have a cleaner version of this. I try to compact it a bit, but uh, I just tweaked it a bit to pass, for example. Uh, it's not tweaked like this in, in the base system. But, yeah. I could have stood up. Um, I've been talking to Glenn a little bit about the notion of uh, release profiles to drive the make release uh, inclusion process with a, a profile that describes essentially all the pieces of base you want and all the packages that you want. Because essentially to build an appliance, that's what you're doing, right? It's, 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 a, yeah, it's, so it's folding in the nano BSD functionality and, and making it part of the release building process. So that's kind of what I was hinting at when I was asking about your longer term roadmap. Because okay. ultimately I want to build it all together. Okay, so I have another project, in fact, for that. And well, it will use all of this, but it's separate. Uh, because port 3 and base system are living in two different uh, repository, uh, what I ended up is find a third one. And I use my I use my Poudre Air uh, tool to uh, I added a new sub command. It will happen probably in the fourth version of Poudre Air, where you can specify okay I need uh, base with these options and these packages and please build me a FreeBSD release as it's done on uh, on the FreeBSD project or please build me um, a USB stick with uh, this package install and whatever or please give me a preceded jail so I, I can deploy somewhere with those package. And it will do the magic of building everything, preparing the environment, and in the end create the, um, create the media.
Any more question? Um, you said you're going to use uh, Clang from ports for older versions of BSD. I can. I think you you will for cross building, right? Or no, I will use uh, the base version if it's recent enough, and uh -huh. the version uh, I fall back on the version from ports if the base version is not good enough. For for example, I'm. I'm Right now, I use always Clang when I can because the oldest version we have in base system is 3.3, which is good enough. But I'm more and more tempted to switch to 3.4, which is way better. So, mm -hmm. meaning that 10.1 will use base version and 10.0 will use the port version. Okay. Will you also use a newer version of libc++ in that case, or will you always rely on the one from the system? I, I will rely on the one from the system because uh, you will be linked to a given version, so you need to keep that one. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you all.